Well, I just want to do this video real quick to show you what I've been up to for the last uh, six or so weeks, maybe a little longer. Uh, I've been playing a full advanced scenario face-to-face -face, uh, of Next War Vietnam, mostly uh, because uh, I've been really excited to play it and I wanted to learn all the naval aspects. I knew the advanced rules of the system for from India-Pakistan, as you know, and the person I was playing with knew the some of the basic rules from Poland, but he had never played the advanced rules, so I figured I would teach it to him and we could learn the naval game as well. We just concluded, and it was um, actually a very surprising and epic uh, game. Uh, we played it over three sessions across six, seven weeks or so, and uh, we just concluded. I was the Vietnamese, and I figured I would take you through some of uh, what happened here over the course of the game now that we've concluded. Uh, the Chinese obviously coming down from China uh, from two directions against the Vietnamese. The Vietnamese definitely outnumbered and outclassed when it comes to uh, troops and uh, quality. The one advantage they do have is the terrain. And so the Vietnamese have a strong defensive uh, position here in these jungle hexes, which are new to this game for the system and are just a nightmare to try and get through. All of the Chinese armor is coming down this way. Armor is halved when attacking into jungle. And infantry is defense is doubled when defending in jungle. So you can see that uh, these very small forces were able to hold back a majority of the Chinese uh, armored uh, corps that were coming in from the north. Um, the Chinese originally started up here. Um, they chose not to go around to the west where there was, where there was few defenders. Um, it would have been a longer route, but there were few defenders. Instead, the Chinese focused on trying to push back the Vietnamese um, through these jungles to get down towards Hanoi, which is the ultimate goal really helps the Chinese uh, get to their victory condition quicker. And uh, here in the last turn, um, the, the Chinese managed to uh, get down to this sort of lowland coastal area. The Indonesians who came on side of the Vietnamese in the U.S. Uh, in the final turn were able to put in at this port, um, were never actually attacked, but uh, the Vietnamese took very heavy losses defending these, these lines. And um, it, was, it was up to the breaking point at this point, especially once they had gotten a foothold on this lowland. Um, so that was uh, not good for the Vietnamese. The Vietnamese also have these uh, garrison units, these uh, self-defense forces. They're not allowed to move, but uh, they, they do uh, defend at three, which is not bad. And they can also flip over into guerrilla mode, which makes it hard to clear some of these cities and urban areas, makes it di more difficult for the Chinese to take them, which is kind of a neat mechanic. I really like that. You got a Supreme uh, HQ here for the Vietnamese army in Hanoi. It's able to lob uh, assaults every turn, uh, basically the entire length of the map. It's got a range of 24, which is uh, pretty impressive. Um, Indonesian air helicopter, attack helicopter came in, took some losses uh, when it was trying to support uh, a combat somewhere out here to the west. Uh, the Vietnamese also suffered a lot of losses out here to the west, although the Chinese forces were a lot thinner. Um, some U.S. Uh, mechanized, uh, a mechanized brigade from the U.S. Uh, landed on the turn before last and was able to drive out here. This was the first turn, uh, this final turn, um, turn three, the game ended after turn three, that the, the uh, Vietnamese and U.S. were able to counterattack uh, some of these Chinese forces, and they did so thankfully to this U.S. armor and uh, some armor that came up from South Vietnam as well. This was going to be kind of gnarly. The, the Chinese, as soon as they broke through this final line, uh, were going to be all along this road network to put pressure on Hanoi. And uh, there was really nothing between them and getting that. Uh, but uh, there were some pretty epic moments here. The Chinese landed this airborne. They airdropped uh, these, this airborne uh, core uh, into the game on turn one, uh, and that provided a little bit of a, a, a back-and-forth chess match with some of the armor uh, that the Vietnamese had up here around this river. And the Americans brought in uh, the 82nd Airborne, and they were... MVPs for the uh, Allied side. They were able to helicopter around the map. They would one turn. They would be here. They'd make an attack against uh, you know some of these units back in this area. Then they would helicopter out. They helicoptered up to these jungles. They uh, put the smack down on some of these Chinese units, like this reduced one. I, there's a couple reduced Chinese units here. Took some losses from American forces, and the Chinese very quickly pivoted to trying to eliminate the the HQ, the 82nd Airborne HQ, which is right here. Uh, eventually, did destroy it on the final turn which uh, which kind of dampened the strength that that, uh, that unit had, but uh, they were definitely the all-stars of the uh, allied, allied forces. And that was the land game. You can see that the Chinese have a really tough time getting through this really, really, really bad terrain. Uh, and, you know, things, I, I think, were starting to stabilize a little bit. We had sort of reached an equilibrium where it was going to be more and more difficult if they couldn't make a breakthrough. Um, and then on the other side, of course, we have the strategic display, and this is the entire naval game. And there's a lot of stuff that interplays between these two sides, uh, specifically with the air game. So a lot of the United States Air Forces would, would start in Japan. And the main mistake that I made as the Vietnamese and American player was that um, all of these blue air units uh, are based in Japan to start the game. They are allowed to rebase to Vietnam. 
Um, however, they incur a supply cost of return for having those units in Vietnam, and I waited too long to rebase them. It wasn't until this, this turn, which was going to be the fourth turn, uh, I was going to finally have the United States Air Force available in Vietnam, and of course the game ended, uh, and so I never got a chance to use them, but you can see they just have like some ridiculously good air units in here. These F-22s with a six air combat rating that are also stealth and can attack in all three phases are insanely powerful. Um, you've got some F-35s in here, and they're really versatile. They can do strike attack at three or they've got area to air combat at four um, the f-35s in particular did a number on the chinese uh, air units um, in, in combat in fact in the final turn the f-35 stationed on this u.s carrier group which was this carrier group here um, this carrier group was allowed to their long-range fighter or their long-range aircraft were able to go into air superiority during the air superiority step because they were close enough to vietnam and these two F-35s were able to hold off six or seven Chinese planes um, every turn just because they're stealth. They weren't allowed to get shot back at. They were very, very clutch. Unfortunately, uh, the second uh, carrier air wing uh, that the Americans got this turn, um, who came in here in the Indian Ocean, uh, did not get a chance to, to come in here. But uh, we also had some really interesting stuff happening on the strategic map as well. There were a lot of naval skirmishes in here. Uh, U.S. air and naval power was dominant, ended up sinking a, uh, a Chinese surface action group at some point during the game. The Philippine, or the, uh, excuse me, the Indonesians entered on the side of the Americans and the Vietnamese. They just arrived in the South China Sea this turn. And we actually had a pretty fierce fight over the Paracels. Uh, in turn two, the Chinese managed to land a landing force on the Paracels. Um, and then those landing forces were uh, put, were isolated and put out of supply because the, um, the surface action group uh, or the amphibious landing group from the Chinese actually got destroyed by American air and naval assets. And then the uh, American U.S. Marine Corps uh, moved in an amphibious landing force. Here you can see the, uh, what is this? This is the... Uh, the third Marine Expeditionary Force with their task force here. They landed on the Paracels. They quickly mopped up the Chinese that were on these islands and took control of it on this last turn. So that denied the Chinese a bunch of points. They were getting, the Chinese were getting five points a turn for each of these island groups that they controlled. They only managed to last one turn in control of the Paracels before the U.S. Marines uh, made them pay. And of course, you can see here we had another Marine group uh, coming in this turn with the second carrier air wing from the Indian Ocean. We had a, uh, an amphibious, another Marine amphibious landing force uh, coming in here from uh, the, the Japan is where they started. And you can see some mechanized Marine. The Marines also had a helicopter unit coming in as well. So it wasn't going to get any better uh, in the naval game uh, for the Chinese. They were basically locked into their invasion of the Vietnam land theater, and uh, the Americans essentially took control of the naval game. Uh, there's a little bit of bad luck on the Chinese part. Once the Chinese grabbed the Paracels, we made a check for all of these other nations to see if they came in. The Philippines stayed neutral. There's a, a, a decent chance that they came in on the side of the Chinese. Malaysia, again, same thing. They stayed neutral. They could have come in on the Chinese side. Indonesia ended up coming in on the U.S. side. And uh, Thailand, who uh, there was a pregame, uh, where's Thailand on here? Thailand, it uh, must be over here somewhere. Uh, Thailand uh, pregame, uh, the U.S., uh, the Vietnamese U.S. player has a choice about how much they want to pressure Thailand to come into the game. And if they put pressure before the game, there's a higher likelihood that the Thai, the Thai come in on the Chinese side. So I chose not to do that. I chose to let the chips fall where they may. And when the, when the paracels were taken, the Thai uh, government decided they were going to stay out of it. So what was the final outcome here? Well, unfortunately, it was a Chinese victory, but um, I blame the bureaucrats in, uh, in Vietnam, in the Vietnam uh, parliament or government body, because what ended up happening was at the end of turn three, the victory point, based on the number of losses and capture that the Chinese had done against the Vietnamese forces, uh, the victory differential was high enough that the, the Chinese player got to roll for auto victory at the end of every turn. Last turn, there was a 10% chance. They failed. We continued on. We did a turn three. This turn, there was also a 10% chance, and wouldn't you know it, the Chinese player needed to roll a zero, and he rolled a zero. And so that ended the game at the end of turn three. Just on the turn, when I felt like I had finally gained control of the situation, I felt like I had stabilized uh, the, the naval game and, and the air game. And as you can see, the U.S. air was about to just put the hurt on the Chinese. These planes are so much better. Uh, it was about to absolutely decimate the Chinese Air Force this turn, and that would have significantly reduced uh, the ability of the, of the uh, Chinese to have air support and whatnot. On top of that, we've got these uh, long-range bombers flying out of Japan. They were poised to deliver a new round of cruise missile strikes. Um, to the Chinese.
Chinese on this land map. I just got a whole new batch of cruise missile reinforcements, and they're able to fly those in. So uh, it was going to be it was going to be a tough turn for the Chinese. I had also made it to the um, I, I had also denied the Chinese another initiative turn. So there's two types of turns in Next War. There's an initiative and a, a contested turn. Turn four was going to be the first time we had a contested turn, which was going to make things a lot more even. It would have um, denied the Chinese player their ability to do first strikes, their ability to do first uh, preemptive special operations uh, with their special operations forces. And in general, I was feeling pretty good going into it. But of course, the bureaucrats in Vietnam saw that as soon as some of these cities here were taken last turn by the Chinese and some of the losses that were incurred, that they didn't want to fight anymore, I guess. So in the nine other universes where this didn't happen, uh, we would have had a really epic fourth turn. But overall, I really enjoyed playing Next War Vietnam. I think it's got a really interesting dichotomy. It's a lot to get your head around uh, with the advanced rules. I'm not going to lie. This is one of the more, most complex game systems I have ever played. And that's, as I talked about in my Next War India-Pakistan video, that's because you're talking about multidimensional warfare across a strategic view of the naval uh, game, a operational view of the land game. Plus, you've got things like the air uh, air game and special operations. And so you're talking about a multifaceted approach to how you uh, combat your opponent. It's not just move and attack with units, although that is certainly a part of it, um, which is why I like the system. But I feel like this game really gave me a great handle on the uh, sort of the whole suite of things that this system offers. You're probably, of all the games that exist, this one in Poland probably provide uh, the most um, in terms of having to know all the rules. You need to know all the land rules here. You need to know all the air rules. You need to know all the naval rules. And all of that comes into play and ties together into a really epic experience. Um, the best system right now for uh, modern combat or near future combat, for sure. I will say that the rules, um, there needs to probably be a, a third set of eyes on the rules because there's some holes or there's some non-intuitive ways it's laid out to find how some of these things lock together, specifically around the amphibious assault rules. I think there's actually some errata where the, the amphibious assault landing rules for this game specifically and the game specific rules got accidentally left out. So there's a big hole there and that was kind of troublesome. But in general, there's just a lot to remember, a lot of procedures to go through. The turn, the advanced game turn sequence is like 45 steps. So uh, this is not a newbie-friendly game. However, um, if you can find someone who can teach it to you, uh, the system, you will have a great time. There's just, just a, a fantastic amount of scope to this game, whether it was the naval conflict, whether it was the air war that went back and forth, the Vietnamese, they only got one air unit left from the start of the game, they started with eight. Uh, whether it was the ground combat, you know, the Vietnamese making these heroic stands in the jungle against overwhelming Chinese force, uh, defending Hanoi, um, getting the Indonesians to, to come in here on the, at the last minute and, and put up some resistance and help them out. Just really an epic scope and uh, a lot of interesting interplay between the various uh, theaters of, of the conflict. So that was Next War Vietnam. That was my face-to-face uh, -face game using the entire suite of advanced rules, all of the air, all of the, uh, all of the naval stuff, and I uh, had a great time. Really looking forward to playing more in this system. I think the next game that I'd really like to play from this system is Next War Korea. Uh, I have the second edition, and that one less focused on the naval game, uh, but it is a two-mapper, and it's a two-mapper from the operational perspective, which uh, I would be really in the mood for. I think really focusing in on the, the ground combat war um, is really where this system's bread and butter lies, so looking forward to that at some point. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. This is a little bonus video I just decided to do upon completing this game, and uh, you know, if you're interested in Next War, I might be able to uh, capture some more when I do some more face-to-face. -face. Thanks for watching.